Electrical Troubleshooting Basics This video uses the Trouble X Electrical Troubleshooting Simulator. Troubleshoot the easy way. In just two steps. The steps divide and conquer. Your first divide is to decide to start the circuit trace with the input or output. 80% or more of electrical and PLC controls are discrete. Discrete means a switch in one of two states, on or off, one or zero, true or false. Easy troubleshooting because the schematic or program keeps decisions down to two. First, based on the symptoms, do you want to start the circuit trace with a relevant input or output? The wiring, program, and even you, will all be looking for either true or false. The false, zero volt reading after the normally closed contact for relay 2, shows us R2 is stopping R1 from turning on. In the previous example, the issue was just an operator error. As we discovered with this circuit, the operator must press the stop push button first to turn off the cylinder out relay, before pressing the in push button. Next, let's look at troubleshooting an actual problem. The symptom? The shifter can go in, but the shifter cannot go out. That symptom can have one of the following seven causes with this circuit. Using a guessing game, hit and miss troubleshooting method, you could go down a rabbit hole while checking all seven. Let's see how using the two-step trace troubleshooting method dramatically simplifies things and reduces troubleshooting downtime. We'll choose the output side to start the trace for this exercise. So, check the meter out using the first fuse or breaker upstream of the point where we will begin the trace, FU3 the primary power input to the circuit in question. This process also eliminates one of the possible causes, FU3 is good, and the meter works. On this rung of the circuit, there is only one condition required to energize the cylinder out coil. So, we check that condition asking is voltage getting through contactor 2.3 to the cylinder out solenoid coil? As we see, the answer is yes. This means the problem is either the coil is burnt out, open, or some other issue outside the control panel. It could be mechanically jammed, the air is off to the cylinder, etc. This particular cause of the symptom was easy to trace back and determine in no time. We confirm the cause is solenoid B, by checking the incoming pressure, be it air or hydraulic. Yes, pressure is good at the input to port B. Then, while solenoid B is energized, we check the output from port B. That measurement indicates zero pressure, confirming solenoid B is defective. In the TroubleX simulation software, the student would select solenoid B defective coil as the correct fault for this problem. Here is another troubleshooting example with the same symptoms, but a different cause as you will see. Hint, it is not solenoid B this time. Next, see if solenoid B is energized. Press the out button while testing for voltage. No voltage here. contact, R2.3 should be closed by relay 2. So, check the left side of R2 for voltage while the out push button is pressed. It should be 120 volts. No voltage here. Next, check the left side of, R1.2 for voltage with the out push button pressed. It should be 120 volts. Voltage on the left side of a contact and not on the right side indicates the contact is open. 
So, check relay 1 coil, it should be off, 0 volts. So, the fault is that relay 1 is off, but the normally closed contact is open. To repair, you would replace relay 1, or it's bad contact. In the TroubleX simulation software, the learner would select R1.2 poor contact as the correct answer. Practice on 25 other fault simulations with the TroubleX. A download link is in the comment area. If you would like to see more of these videos, please give a thumbs up to this video and reshare it with others. Thanks.